The word just came down this morning. Special directive to all section chiefs. The inspector general is starting a full-scale investigation of arms contracts. With that much money involved, they'll know we had to be in it together. I'm getting out. Oh? I'm leaving for Geneva tonight. You assure me that my name will never come into this, that uh, you will be my protector. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. shot some but where oh over there there see i don't see anything uh general hollister yes i'm from the police sir my name is uh colombo so you're here to take away my military souvenirs for uh permanent enshrinement in the memorial hall as a matter of fact lieutenant uh, mmi is giving me a testimonial dinner tonight they're commemorating the 20th anniversary of my retirement and the opening of the Hollister exhibit. Yes, General, do you think I could uh, look inside? Uh... Lieutenant, uh, wouldn't that be a little obvious? Well, I want to be in a position, sir, where I can tell my superiors that I've checked everything out. Uh, they've already started nailing it shut. Uh, it's, it's just two nails, sir. Very well, gentlemen. I have a friend here who would like to inspect the contents of the crate. Would you open it again, please? Yes, sir. Wow. He... A lot of guns. <laughs> you know, Lieutenant, uh, I had this out earlier today. I was uh, thinking of giving it over to the exhibition. Although it's never had anything to do with my military career, I was, uh, uh, oh, yes. Yes, I remember now. I stumbled over the crate as I was looking at the gun. Well, that must have been what your witness saw. Of course. Uh, Mrs. Stewart? Yes. Lieutenant Colombo from the police about a report you made of a shooting. Oh, y yes, come in. Who is it, Helen? It's the police, Mother. Um, we're just having a uh, um, uh, before dinner cocktail. Would you um, uh, no, that's all right. ask for his identification? Oh, Mother. Uh, I'm well, sorry, that's, Lieutenant. That's all right. That's all right. She's entitled to that. Uh, you must be Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Walters. Walters. Right. Walters. You are, ma'am. You sure don't look like a policeman. I want to get right to the point. You know, I couldn't find any evidence of any shooting in that house that you pointed out. I mean, there was no gun, there was no victim, there was nothing. Just a house, a fellow living in it. Well, I, I know what I saw. Well, maybe you think you saw. I am not hallucinating. Well, look, I'm just trying to reconcile Lieutenant, the two stories. Lieutenant, I saw two men. One in the bathrobe and the other one in the uniform. And the one in the bathrobe shot the other man. Now, that is the simple truth. You don't recognize me? <laughs> no. Should I? You said that you saw me shoot somebody today. I think I'm going to do a little fishing. Hey. It's all right. If you catch something good, bring it in. Give your bowl of chili free. I'm just here. Uh... Combining a little business with pleasure. At this hour? Well, George, my brother-in-law, George. Yeah? Oh, you don't know him. But at any rate, he's a fantastic fisherman, this man. And he told me that the best time to catch anything is around about now. He says, get there before everybody, and you kind of catch the fish off guard. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like it worked. Not yet, but I'm going to keep trying. Whatever happened to that pearl-handled revolver? Because when I looked into the crate, you know, I didn't see it in there. Lost it, Lieutenant, a long time ago. When I was in the hospital in Korea, somebody liberated it, you know, wanted a souvenir. Actually, I was, uh, I was pretty pleased it was taken. It was getting to be just too much of a publicity gimmick. Do you suppose that uh, you and I could go somewhere 
Oh, a public place, if you're worried. Uh, Some place where we could have a drink. Why? Well, you're breaking the law. Uh, well, I don't think I understand. You're accusing, convicting, and sentencing me without a fair trial. I'd like to suggest <laughs> the possibility that you were deceived. Deceived by whom? By yourself. And we all know the tricks that the sun and the sea, even your own eyes can play on you. Well, as a matter of fact, I had dinner with General Hollister. General Hollister? Well, what do you know about that? Are you going to see him again? Well, he... He asked me to come out on his yacht. <laughs> well, that calls for a drink. You see, I had second thoughts about the shooting. You see, our traffic people, they picked up a couple of kids. They were joyriding in a car they hotwired, and it turned out that this car belonged to a Roger Dutton, and he's a Marine colonel, Mrs. Stewart. And it could be that he was the man that you saw in the general's house. You know, you did a lot of investigating for a man who who asked me if I wore glasses or if I had been drinking. Well, that's just part of the job. Anyway, I found out that this Colonel Dutton booked a passage on an 8 p.m. flight to Switzerland. But then he never showed up to take the plane. Well, I, I still don't get the connection. No, you see, this, this Colonel Dutton, he was in the Marine Materiel Command. Oh, so that's a, uh, he's a procurement officer. But he had a lot of dealings with General Hollister. And he suddenly took leave. And then he just disappeared. Look. What do you see? Your house. And in the window? I, I can't see anything because of the reflection of the sun and the water. You know, you said that you saw a shooting there about this same time of day. What's this, another fishing expedition? Well, not exactly. Uh, just wanted to talk to you, General. Have you heard about that body that they found off Morocco Cove? Oh, Colonel Dutton, yeah. I just heard about it. Just came on the radio. Yeah, that's shocking. Colonel Dutton, the man that I spoke to you about, somebody dumped him in the ocean. He thinks I shot him. Well, what I think is unimportant, what counts, is what you saw. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't see anything. Well, now, Mrs. Stewart, that's not what you said. Well, no, it was the, the light, some crazy reflection. Yeah, but you told me that you distinct. I don't care what I said. I was wrong. Look at this. I got to say the little the Japanese stirring spoon. I got on the Okinawa, the commissary. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I guess my wife is right. I can't give anything away, especially when it means something to you. I appreciate very much you coming down here and meeting me. Just remember our agreement, Lieutenant. No questions and no trying to get me to change my mind. Not one question. Not even a half a question. I only wanted you to see the exhibit. I find it hard to believe that a man like General Hollister, who saved and cherished every war souvenir, even the smallest photograph, I just think it's strange that he was so careless as to allow his gun to be stolen. I don't know what you want me to say. Well, if it was me, if it was my gun, I would take very good care of that gun. I'd have it in my apartment where people could see it, and I would keep it polished, and I would keep it oiled, and I would keep it loaded. We found the bullet in the victim, and a ballistics check will match up the bullet with the gun. But somehow, General, something told me that you could never get rid of that gun. No, that pearl-handled pistol was just too tied up in your pride. Because of your tremendous belief in yourself, you figured everyone would accept your story about having a duplicate made. But there never was a duplicate made, was there? This, in fact, is the murder weapon, isn't it, General? I seem to have a special talent, you know? I mean, with, with all the men in the world, I always seem to pick Mr. Wrong. I, I'm seriously considering locking myself in a closet for the rest of my life. No, that's wrong. That's just the way my niece Marilyn felt after her divorce. Now she's got a new husband. As a matter of fact, he's a cop. Just one more thing. 